Hey everybody, sorry I haven't made that much videos. I was extremely busy again. I was trying to make a co-op let's play with my friend Oblivion709, but guess what? We couldn't! Ah well, we tried our best. But, I do have some bad news. The microphone I used to use for my other commentaries is broken! It can still function, but most of the time when I plug it into one of the USB ports on my laptop, it doesn't want to work, which quite frankly made me pretty upset. I'm borrowing my dad's microphone this time around. It's made by Dynex and doesn't have a USB cable, and it works fine so far. I know the mic sounds like shit and my voice doesn't sound all that clear and you're gonna hear a bunch of sounds and everything, but I think it'll still do for now. If you don't like the mic I'm using, I'll try saving money for a headset. Anyways, I'm gonna do another commentary. It's on Gaming Prodigy's review of Super Mario World. I've been rambling enough, so let's get this over with. Skipping the intro that has been cursed by Irate Gamer Special Effects. I think I know where you got the Japanese subtitle. Google Translate, perhaps? If there's ever a classic platformer out there that really puts your mind at ease, no game does it better than one of the SNES's best and the first. It even puts every modern platformer out there to total freaking shame. Well, yeah, I have to admit, it's a fantastic game, but there are other good platformer games out there. Take Sonic 3 and Knuckles, for example. That game is a perfect alternative for SMW. To begin with, it's a massive game. There are a lot of zones, with each zone being about twice as big as the zones from Sonic 1 and 2. Not to mention there are 14 special stages if you want to get the best ending. I'm of course talking about none other than Super Mario World on the S any mother friggin S. I call it the S any mother friggin S because I'm hardcore, bitches! So let's pop this little pack of adventure in and get it started. Ah, uh, may I ask what happened to your SNES? It looks like you duct taped the second controller port. So at the start, you see Mario doing his thing, kill some enemies here and there. And guess what? A new dinosaur partner of his is born. None other than good old Yoshi himself. Yeah, we've seen the opening demo for Super Mario World so many times before. And yes, you are gonna see a lot of shots of himself. Kinda reminds me of someone. Nah, you already know who. Save files are actually very useful, since they let you continue where you left off after you exit the game. And the reason why they made more than one save file is just in case somebody else in your household wants to finish the game with his or her own progress. You are right, it doesn't make a single difference to the gameplay itself, but save files are there for a reason. So the story here is, you're in Dinosaur Land, and Princess Peach is being kidnapped again, and Bowser's behind it. So it's up to you, either Mario or Luigi, to save her once again, just like the previous Mario games. So you start off on Yoshi's Island, first you go to his house, or you could completely ignore it. Check his note. Isn't it wonderful? You're using a completely unnecessary zoom in effect! Bravo! Well, no says he's not home, but he's gonna rescue all his comrades. What's happening to your audio? It's screwing up. We're also being kidnapped by Bowser. So start Again, with the unnecessary zooms. And also. Start for the first world here. Get this little guy here. Yeah, eat that motherfucker. Oh yeah, and another thing. This is the censored and extended version of the, quote, review, unquote. Another version of the same video, huh? Gee, reminds me of another person, but I can't quite put my finger on it. By the way, it's not a cat, it's a beach koopa. Believe me, I do tons of research on Mario Wiki. Oh, bonsai bell. Oh, sh Yeah, eat that motherfucker. What? Eat that, motherfuckers! For I'm so bad at Super Mario World, yo! In all honesty, are you trying to make a review or a let's play? Because in a review, aren't you supposed to go in depth about what you like and dislike about the game? You can joke around in a let's play, but making a game review is quite different. 
So yeah, if you're familiar with all the previous Mario games on the NES, and a long time gear like me, well, obviously you're not the only one. A lot of gamers grew up with either an NES, SNES, Genesis, or Nintendo 64. And it kinda seems like you're bragging about you being a long time gamer. The key word being seems. You should feel right at home with this, for sure. You want the Game Boy Advance for you too. So you start running around like the previous Mario games. Or lie down. You have a new um, jumper here, the, the spin jump, you can kill enemies faster, go through the blocks faster. Woohoo! Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the main problem of the video. The audio for both the game footage and the commentary are inconsistent. Here's a tip for you. Don't have the camera record yourself playing the game if you're not that good at making the audio sync properly. Instead, I recommend writing a script, then record yourself saying what's on the script without any background noise. Get down the hill. Can explore new terrains too. The zooming effects didn't help the video, but will the panning effect do the job? No! One part of my soul will never forget you to this day. Again, your commentary audio is butchered. Wonder what happened? If you get out of the cave, you end up rocketing out of this big diagonal pipe. And these little sticks of tape here, every stage you go through, you run into them, and you can- Not gonna repeat myself about the audio. And the zoom effects. You can also get all sorts of power-ups too, like the classic flame here. Why is a white and red shoot flames? Classic flame? I thought it was called a fire flower. Here's another thing I have to bring up. Because the game audio overpowered your commentary volume, it sounds like you're babbling random things, making it really hard for the audience to hear and understand you. What was with that random fade effect? That's right, Mario. Collect those mother coins. Collect those mother coins! Woo! If I were you, I would bring the P switch to the left side upon entering the stage, press it, then continuously jump while running to get the most coins. Well, that's how I play the Yellow Switch Palace anyway. Let's get that yellow switch enabled. Three, two, one! Oh my god, I just did the best thing ever! I pressed a huge yellow switch! Woot! Yeah, I couldn't resist. I like making impressions of other people. Yeah, every time you step on a colored switch, yellow, green, doesn't matter. That certain color will be turned from a dotted square to a colored box with an exclamation point on it, meaning... You can get any power you want. Depends on the color. Well, it's not entirely true, because the red and blue blocks don't contain power-ups. Yeah, watch out for the flames. <laughs> that was close. They aren't that hard to avoid, actually. You just need to wait for them to jump from the lava, then when they come back down, you can pass. We can also switch sides too. <laughs> what? I can tell you love to curse, considering you're a fanboy of AVGN and Irate Gamer. And why'd you blurt out, what? Bag. Any more enemies? I thought so. You may come back, but... Let's just continue with the damn level anyway. This work is really, really dangerous, so it's gonna be a pain in the ass for you first timers out there. Hey, guess what? The audio inconsistency is really showing. As for this segment of the castle, it's not that difficult. Just watch out for the giant pillar. Damn! Close, huh? Must. Not. Repeat. Myself! Alright, these 
mine! Mama f***er, what? Into the damn pool, you little what? What? Oh, there he goes. Son of a bitch. Whoa, boy, you're getting a little too excited there. Also, when Iggy is right next to a ledge, don't attack him when the platform tilts to the other side. Wait for the platform to tilt to that side again, then attack him. It's a much quicker way to beat Iggy. Wrong, it's because the game is generous of giving you loads of lives, like in most games in the main Mario series. In some levels too, um, whenever there's a key in a keyhole in place, you can discover all sorts of new paths. Just gotta be real lucky though. Is it really that necessary to show three clips of Mario going through keyholes? I didn't think so. Also, finding the secret goals don't require luck. They are always in certain locations in various levels. It's actually the only secret ghost house in the game. The other ghost houses don't have the word secret in it, just to let you know. Stop it! I really? You're complaining about how they made the booze immune to fireballs. Of course, you can't kill them with fireballs. There are certain enemies you can't defeat. Ugh, another person who can't stand challenge. Kind of like a certain someone. You already know who. Oh, you're gonna talk about the music and sound now. So, I guess I could call the first part of the review, Look at me play SMW with my crappy sound editing skills. So, music so far in a nutshell, for long-time gamers such as myself, You already implied that you're a long-time gamer. This should all be second nature to us. And being a long-time gamer of this, I'm pretty much partial to this, so every gamer, new and old, they should feel right at home with this, for sure. Graphics, even to this day, they still don't matter. I mean, yeah, I've got 6428 of VS, but it's no big deal, because 16-bit is definitely for the win, in my case. I will agree that it's no big deal, since graphics are obviously not the most important part of the game. I'll also say that the 16-bit era is my favorite gaming era, but that's my personal preference. As for gameplay, if you're a first-timer, it'd be a real pain in the neck, but again, for long-timers, such as myself, it's just like the previous Mario games. You hold Y or B to run around, jump, you go and pound away, coin boxes, spin around, break blocks, kill enemies faster with the A button. So yeah, all the controls should be second nature to us. Seeing you describe the controls to the audience, it doesn't actually sound that hard for newcomers. Mario games are usually very easy right from the start as well, especially the 2D ones, but yeah, the later levels can be quite hard. Also, what if there are newcomers who want a challenge? The fun fact there are new gamers and old gamers alike will never ever get tired, no matter what age. Then how come you said that it would be a pain in the neck for newcomers? CONTRADICTION FOR THE WIN! There's also dangerous terrains you have to go through. In order to ensure the greatest adventure of all. Final work on Super Mario World? Is it worth everyone's time? <laughs> you bet your Hang on a second. Did you forget to censor a word? 6428 of the ass. Yep, you did, since this is the censored version. But we're at the home stretch now. And it's a must on. Whether it's SNES, or the Game Boy Advance remake, or any other remake. There was a version of Super Mario All-Stars that had Super Mario World pictured here, but I think it's more of a port than a remake. It did have new Luigi sprites, four save files, and you could press select to exit to the All-Stars title screen from the map screen as opposed to the original game on the SNES, but other than that, it plays exactly the same. Nintendo plans to do in the future. Bottom line, no matter how young or old you start, always keep this game within your heart and in your mind, too.
Until next time, gamers. Okay, I'm gonna end it right here. Since the ending is just him exiting his house and teleporting using the green screen effect, then the credits roll. So, what do I think of Gaming Prodigy's SMW review? Well, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it could have been a lot better. First off, the zooming and panning effects are pretty pointless. The camera angle plus the close-up effects while we see him play is kinda weird, too. Second, most of the review was just him trying to sound cool and hip while playing the game. In a game review, you're supposed to talk about what you like and dislike about the game. You can act funny in your reviews, but try to be funny in moderation so people won't label you as an AVGN ripoff. Third, and the number one thing to improve on, is the sound. The commentary sounds really jumpy, making it difficult for the audience to listen to. Also, since the commentary was recorded by using a camera while playing the game, the audio in the game itself sounds seriously out of sync. I recommend doing post-commentary, meaning recording the commentary with something like a microphone after you record the footage. Post-commentary gives you an easier time to think of what to say, that plus a script. Scripts help a whole lot! You can keep doing takes if you screw up on a line you're trying to say as well. Recording your lines without any background noise is recommended too. Also, if you can, you could record the entire game for your review, but leave out spoilers such as endings and plot twists. So, that's the end of my commentary. And once again, sorry I haven't made that much videos. And just because I'm not online that much does not mean I hate you guys. I just have a real busy life. I've been kinda sick too. I've been getting heartburns and allergies, and they suck! But anyways, now you know why I haven't been on that much. This is Super Mario Kenny saying farewell for now.